Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dolbeck today for some crazy clip in 3v3. I did not play 3v3 since a very long time, but recently I tried a few times and I had a lot of fun. So I decided to do a grind, like a day of grind, and upload a couple of clips. Let's say that I've played a couple of hours, not a day like it. Yeah, I've played a couple of hours and I'm gonna just show you the highlight. I put out my old build, you know, with the Great Axe Blunderbuss. Uh, I got some shirking LPs. I'm gonna show the build and the gameplay. So, I'm gonna explain a bit what happened in the clip. And I'm gonna show the clip at the end. There's gonna be the build guide for the people who want to see the build. So at the start of this clip, I am in a 2v3 with my teammate and we are just kind of trying to, to survive and, and kill them. And my teammate die while I kill someone and then you're going to see me 1v2 the two other. So I'm going to try to describe everything is happening so quick that I can't really explain everything that is happening. But I'm going to try to keep the key information for the people who want to understand my my way of thought. Like right now I'm just trying to line of sight the musket, not give in an angle and regain. And I'm trying to benefit a bit from my shrieking eel and find an opportunity to burst with my blunderbuss. With my, uh, I'm gonna keep my Maelstrom like a uh, closer, like a finish it, like just to finish the duel or to save my life with the leeching or by eating a bullet because the Maelstrom gonna eat bullet. I'm taking a good care because there's some trap on the ground, but I know that the the musket can't really win if I hide behind the, the, the wall. Like it, you need to wait almost at the end that the circle is closing because a really good musket sometime uh, as a light melee it's can be pretty hard to approach. But if you wait the good moment, uh, it's a GG's almost for him. So I'm just Trying to support my teammate and apply plague at the start, seeing what they can do, how I can support, uh, which enemy is the most squishy, like the target selection. And the target selection are is a bit of the weapon. Uh, how to select a target? You look for the weapon. There's some weapon that the people are usually squishy, like the bow, musket, or fire staff, as example. And then RT in light or medium armor, RT like having a shield in the back, it helped to, to know some stuff like that, like the roll. And then after that, it's only the testing. When you, you shoot at him, you need to, to look his life going down. And then uh, you need to ask yourself the question, does it worth it for me to keep attacking this one or go for the next one? So you can just test the target that you are thinking that are the best to get and then after knowing you just select it and go for it at the start when i am pushing uh i try to like trap them into the spawn if i'm against some melee i'm gonna be maybe uh, less aggressive but against some ranged you want them to be trapped in their spawn the worst thing you can do for fighting ranged dps is to stay in your spawn and wait for them to hit you for some reason. You have to cross the arena as soon as you can so they don't have space to run away. And if they want to run away, they're gonna have to pass on your side, use an ability and dodge, and they're gonna suffer from it during the world fight because they're gonna be on cooldown. So theoretically, with my disease and my shrieking eel, if I, I play life and time, I have a good chance uh, to win on my side. But uh, yeah, it all depends on, on your t enemy and if they have a healer or not. Like if they can heal, you better try to burst and risk your life harder. Uh, I'm trying the tab target. You see, I was against tab target in this game, but 
now that the tad target is there like not using it is almost like throwing on purpose so i'm trying to learn how to use it i know that i'm still not like perfect on when use it and sometimes it can even kill me to use a tab target but uh with the blunderbuss i can see that the uh, it, it it increase the damage uh, like usually to do the same damage i think that i add to to aim but i you you know i aim pretty good in this game so it changed almost nothing for me i'm just i think i'm just using the tab target mostly for the it because it costs less energy to my brain and it, that's it man it's not because it's better or whatever it's just during that time that i'm not aiming my brain can think uh, it can relax a bit <laughs> maybe i'm 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 too old to play a competitive game mode like i don't want to 1v1 people anymore i'm just like bro just let me be man like yeah so another 1v2 as you can see you can do your a light attack into a charge and you do a double tap or you can do a light attack into a maelstrom it does a double or triple tap depending if Finland or not and then you can do the same a thing again a light or easy attack into a reap and it's or a maelstrom or a charge so you got three combo of abilities so you you come in you do one or two light attack and then your maelstrom one or two light attack charge one or two light attack reap so yeah like uh, you, you can do it uh, into the order you want like i mean it's not the good order just uh i'm trying to, to tell it like the order there's no like real order on your weapon like it all depends on the situation those abilities are most of them situational let's take uh azot shrapnel as example it's good to use azot shrapnel when the the enemy are close to you so using it when it's distance is not really good but when it's close it's really worth it like it's amazing and then it's the same thing like for the reap and the maelstrom and the charge it's all some situational perk but that you will need in your fight and you better to use at a good moment so this build for the small scale pvp is still usable and good and i like it maybe i would have a ma better kd with a farm mage or with a void gauntlet but i don't care i'm just there to have fun and at the same time uh it's shredding uh i'm pretty sure that I, i'm gonna get like used to it again and soon i'm gonna pop some 30 or 40 opr again with this build just because why not so for this last game i will show you the gameplay and let you hear there's a lot of people that think that the 3v3 is not giving a lot of point compared to opr but i just want to you to see how quick 3v3 happens sometime i feel like uh, if you can speed run some 3v3 it's one of the best uh, pvp xp in the game it's faster than than opr but for this you need to be good at the game so on that i'm gonna let you guys on the gameplay and just after there's gonna be the build guide so if you want to see the build guide just stay tuned and i wish everyone a good day peace out
So this blunderbuss come from the mutation and the great axe come from Ennead or Lazarus. I'm pretty sure it's Ennead over there or Lazarus, but I'm pretty sure it's more Ennead. So let's get straight into the build guide. I put out my old school build. You see, it's all some 700 gear with shirking heel. I could be adding shrinking heal on this piece, but you know, with all the new gear, I'm gonna have to straight up create a new piece probably or wait for, for better. For the moment, this is what I have. It worked. You're gonna see this build is far to be optimized, but I still beat a lot of people who think they are good at PvP, even if, like, I, I can't, I'm not 725 and far of it. So health is not the best perk you can have on it. Like there's a lot of better option. I think having one stack is not that bad. Mostly if you have a shrinking health build, if you have some health, it's not too bad because it's going to regen your health. But I think even with a shrinking heal build, if you have another perk than health, maybe that could be beneficial. So I'm there with my shrinking heal. I have the, the exhaustive net shot. I think is a really nice perk. For the blunder boss the slash conditioning is nice too i think there's a lot of slash weapon in the game uh shrinking it again refreshing charge is one of those underrated perks that can change everything in the game like if you can land one and get the the cooldown then you can charge again against a mage or something it's gonna help you catch up the tumbler boot it's just to make the shrinking eel better and then a bit of fortify and power, all what I need. You can get nullified by Oblivion though. So I'm using the Pestilence mostly for the Plague. I really like the Plague. I could be having Plague Splitting Grenade on my build, but I don't have it. And it's still working pretty fine. If I put the Plague Splitting Grenade, I'm going to lose some defensive perk, defensive perk. And I'm already getting a lot of Plague like that, so I'm not sure about adding it or not. I just got this uh, great axe from the wheel. Uh, I feel like it's pretty good. I'm a look if I can build better or if I just upgrade it exactly like it, it is like now. But right now, I think it's pretty good and I like it. I like to use a stone form in 3v3. It worked very good. I got the trust protection, stamina recovery over over there. Elt is not a requirement, but I think uh, the two other are a bit better. I think the trust protection is a bit less uh, in three v three. There's not that much spear user, but even then, you're gonna see me dying by a spear. I think in this video. So yeah, trust protection is good. Slash protection is good. And elemental protection like void. Like you're gonna see I have some malachite, some opal in my gear. Only because there's a lot of void gauntlet right now and, and fire staff. So you need to like before in the past instead of having those opal, I had some ruby slotted in so I can because there was less void DPS, but now since there's like a lot of void, I did not put really uh fire protection because if I put a fire gem, I'm gonna lose some elemental protection and I don't want it to happen. I decided to use Keen because I feel like the Blunder boss uh, is benefiting a lot of the Keen. You can use Trust or uh, Fire, but uh, I, I feel like Keen is a great thing mostly with the, the you see with the Great Axe, uh, the Penetrating Empower. It's a critical hit and I got vicious too. So it takes it take some crit with this build. It is really nice. And with the great axe, there's some passive too that make me leech when I hit a crit. So overall, I think having keen is not a waste. I had a slash ring too uh, in, my, in the past that I was using. But right now I decided to use invigorated punishment too because uh, on my holder ring, I had... Uh, so this is the ring that I was running usually, Mortal Empowerment and Slash Damage, but I kind of realized that I probably have too much Empowerment, so I'm better to just go with with that, and I feel like it's an upgrade. Uh, I could be using something else than that, I just use that because... Uh, 
Yeah, I need to use something else than that. <laughs> no, but seriously, I need the endless thirst or something. So this is the consumable that I use. Worked pretty well. This is my attribute. When I take food, I reach 350 over there. And I put it in constitution because I feel like having some extra strength will not me make me hit that much harder. But some extra con gonna make me survive though. Oh, and that extra, that extra con too gonna help me with the shirking heel. If you made it this far in this video, you are the best. Remember to sub, like, and comment for more. Thank you so much. I wish you a good day. Peace out.